Hi, welcome to this tutorial, another in my series on projectiles. And what we're going to look at in this particular video is working out the speed of a particle at some point on the trajectory and the direction that it makes. And to do this, what I've got here is an example where we've got a stone is thrown at 20 meters per second at an angle of elevation of 60 degrees from a height of 15 meters. And we've got to find the speed that it is traveling after two seconds and the angle that it makes with the horizontal. Now, where the particle is after two seconds, I have no idea. But because the motion is in the upward direction and we're going to be taking upwards when it comes to the vertical motion as being positive. I would suggest that it's easier to work with the problem with the particle on this part of the curve moving in the upward sense. You'll see later it doesn't matter if it turns out to be over here. The mathematics will tell us if it's over here. But I'm going to put it on the upward positive stretch of this curve. So let's suppose the particle is say at this point when t equals two seconds. And that means its speed is directed at a tangent to the curve. It's going in that direction. Let's call it V and we've got to find this and we've got to find out what angle it makes with the horizontal. Now to do questions like this what we need to do is consider the components of V at this particular moment in time. And one will be horizontal and one will be vertical. And by doing this what we do is we create a vector triangle like this. I'll just squeeze it in here because as you'll see we won't have much room otherwise to do this question. But there's V that we're trying to find out. We've got our components, the horizontal component and we've got the vertical component. And what we'll be able to do is if we can find these two components will be to apply Pythagoras' theorem to get V and then we can use basic trigonometry to get this angle in here. So let's have a look then at trying to work out what these components are. Well the first one, the horizontal component, is very easy because we should know that from watching the previous tutorials that the horizontal component is unaffected by acceleration. The only acceleration acting on the particle is vertically downwards. And so there's no acceleration in the horizontal sense so it moves at a constant speed. And that speed will be the component of the 20 meters per second horizontally. That will be 20 cosine 60 degrees. 20 cos 60 degrees. Let's work out what that comes to. We'll just put it down here that the horizontal velocity is going to equal 20 cos 60 degrees. And that turns out to equal 10 meters per second exactly. So we've got that this value across here then is 10 meters per second. But what about this vertical component? Why don't we call it, say, V1? We've got this one then is 10 meters per second. But if we're to get V1, I've got to consider the vertical motion. So let's just put this up here, consider vertical motion. So we're going to need to use our equations for constant acceleration because we've got the constant acceleration due to gravity here. That would be we need to work out our variables S, U, V, A and T. And we need a positive sense and as I said earlier the positive sense ought to be upwards because we're projecting initially in an upward sense. So we'll mark that in 
upwards as being positive. So the particle is here then when t equals 2, 2 seconds. Do we know what s is? The displacement? No, we don't. So we'll just leave that unanswered then. Do we know what the initial upward velocity was? Yes, it's this component here. Got to mark it in. It's going to be 20 sine 60 degrees. I won't write it in there. It'll just be squashed in otherwise. But we'll just put it over here. 20 sine 60 degrees. We need V, the final velocity when T equals 2. I called it V1. So we'll just mark that in as V1. The acceleration is downwards. So it's acting in the opposite sense here. So that's going to be minus the acceleration due to gravity, minus 9.8 meters per second per second. And T is 2. So to work out V, the equation that we would want to use then is V equals U plus AT. And if we work that out, we then end up with V1 equals U being 20 sine 60 degrees plus the acceleration, which is minus 9.8. And that is multiplied by the time T of two seconds. And if you work this out, what you find you get is a negative answer, minus 2.279 and so on meters per second. Now, the thing is, it's come out as negative in the opposite sense to what we've got here. So our prediction that when it, t was equal to 2, that the particle was on this part of the trajectory is now wrong. Because v is negative, it must be on this part of the trajectory. It must now be on the way down. Let's just put it here, say. We can mark in those components. We've got the horizontal one, which we know was 10 meters per second. And the one downwards, we've just seen now, is 2.279. I can drop the minus because the minus is telling me it's going down because it's in the opposite sense. So its magnitude is 2.279 and so on meters per second. So I want to get this velocity here, which is going to be acting at a tangent then to the curve. Doesn't look much like a tangent, but uh, it was intended to be. Okay, that's V. We need to find V then. And we can do this then by Pythagoras' theorem. Let me just draw that triangle out again. Let's just put that then as 10 that way. And now that velocity down there is 2.279 and so on. So we're out to try and get that V through there. So by Pythagoras' theorem, V will be equal to the square root then of the sum of the squares of the other two shorter sides. So we've got 2.279 and so on squared plus this side squared, 10 squared. Now, if you work that out, you'll find that it comes out to 10.256 and so on. And if we round that to one decimal place, that would be 10.3, 10.3 meters per second to one decimal place. Now we need to get the angle that it makes with the horizontal. It's now making an angle to the downward horizontal. Okay, theta. We'll mark theta in there. So to get theta, I can say that the tan of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent side. Tan theta equals 2.279 then divided by 10. And if I was to inverse both sides of that equation, I'd end up with theta equaling the inverse tan then of 2.279 and so on divided by 10. And if you work this out on your calculator, you'll find you get 12.84 and 
and so on. Which when rounded to one decimal place is going to be 12.8 degrees to 1 dp. So we have our speed then 10.3 meters per second and we have the angle that it makes with the downward horizontal 12.8 degrees. Okay. So I hope that's given you some idea then how you can go about working out problems like this. As I say, I'd always put the particle on the side that you're going to have as the positive sense. It just makes the mathematics easier to work with. And then whatever you work out, interpret your answer and you'll be able to det detect whether it's on the upward part or the downward part of the uh, trajectory. Okay.